great songs, great singing this afternoon, and so glad uh, that you all were able to be here and be able to sing these songs with us. And uh, so, got two texts to read uh, this afternoon. The first one, uh, very simply, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13, uh, four words, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not kill. Then the other text that I'd like to read is found in the book of Matthew uh, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, and I'll be reading verses 17 through 22. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Mm, yep. Well, I'll just read. All right. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Let's go down to verse 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Reka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thy fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. And let us look to our Lord now in a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your love to us, mercy and grace and watch care over us. Thank you, our Father, for the day that you have provided and blessed us with. I thank you for each and every one that is here. And I pray, Lord, that in everything we say and do today, that we bring honor and glory uh, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I ask, Lord, that you would be with me now as thy servant, and may you give me liberty and unction from on high to present thy word in truth and in love. Forgive us of our sins, and may thy will be done. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. So, as uh, Brother Danny and I were talking, as he mentioned, uh, we are now back in Exodus chapter 20, continuing through our series of messages on the Ten Commandments. Uh, the Lord willing, this will, of course, carry into 2016 for a little bit, as we're only on commandment number six, thou shalt not kill. Now, beloved, as I've said in the past, and I'll go ahead and repeat myself just a little bit now for, the, for context, for way of review, since we did take a week off last week, we know that these are the, what are commonly referred to as the Ten Commandments given unto Moses from God on Mount Sinai. And these commandments are important for us, as I kind of was preaching about this morning, um, you know, God has a, a set way and order. And uh, this, is, this is it right here. Now, we are not uh, saved by keeping this law, and we are not going uh, you know, to be held accountable in that way. We're under grace, not under the law. But these are still good uh, for us to live our life by, and we need them, and they help us in our walk with the Lord and how we're to treat fellow man. Now, we understand that we studied the first four commandments had everything to do with our relationship with, with God, right? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. And we talked about those, and then we talked about last week, um, how we are, or two weeks ago, for us, how we are to treat, right, um, our, our fellow mankind, to honor our father and our mother. And now we see here, right, well, let me say this, you know, we need... We need to adhere to these things. We need to obey what God says in His Word. And we need to keep the first commandments truly, sincerely, and earnestly. And if we're doing those things, if we're loving God like we should, if we're not having idols like we shouldn't have, uh, if we are um, you know, coming to the house of the Lord, then it shouldn't be hard for us to do these last six. Right? <clears throat> the last six, um, as it were, have been called the, the marble pillars, which hold up the social order in the world. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, uh, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Right? And honor thy father and thy mother. Where do you think all these things come from? Right? You, you know that you, you, know, you live near houses, a lot, you know, if you live in a community or if you live near neighbors, we're not just supposed to go over there and just take what's not ours. Why? God said not to. You say, no, that's because, you know, Knox County says not to, and if you do it, the sheriff will come. No, God says not to. That's why we don't steal. That's why we don't come in our neighbor's 
uh, stop. That's why we don't, you know, commit adultery. That's why we don't, you know, bear false witness. And that's why we don't kill. Because God says not to. And our laws and our society, as I said this morning in the message, are based a lot around the law of God, the word of God. And we just got to obey and do what God says. The last time, and then I read a few verses in, in chapter 5. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ, as I read, said that I didn't come to destroy. I say remember. Uh, Wednesday nights, I'm preaching a series of messages on the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, the last time that we looked at, thou shalt not kill, as the Lord talked about in Matthew chapter 5, was way back when. Brother Matt, you remember? Give me the month. Come on. You ready? Four weeks <laughs> nice, because we're on the 35th message. Very, that, was, that was pretty smart. Way back in March. March. So that means that I started this series before that. So we've probably been in Matthew uh, for all of 2015. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that, because we did all the Beatitudes first. Okay, I digressed. Anyway, the last time that we studied about, um, in, in the context as a church, as I preached in Matthew chapter 5, was way back in uh, March, when we looked at how the Lord said, you know, again, he didn't just come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And we're going to see how the Lord takes this commandment given unto Moses by God for us, and really, in essence, not only fulfills it, but yeah, really makes it impactful for us. So we're going to look at both of those, uh, those things today, the Lord willing. All right? So today, the Lord willing, I want to look at this. I'm going to ask the question, is killing wrong? Secondly, we're going to see that murder is forbidden. So is killing wrong? It's a very common question uh, when we come to this commandment, and one that took me a couple of weeks to get through. As I said, I wasn't quite um, convinced or studied or, or as comfortable as I wanted to be last week. So is all killing wrong. Beloved, when I look at this commandment, I think that this commandment faces man with the sacredness of human life. And we're living in a day and age when it seems that life of others is lightly regarded. Both in the murders that we see committed, in the killing of unborn children, and even so much so in the power when people, you know, with um, uh, euthanization of adults and things like that. The sacredness of human life is not what it used to be. This is the shortest of all the commandments, four words, 16 letters, I think. Don't take your time to count it. It's either 16 or 17. I, I think I'm right about that. Four words, thou shalt not kill Yet it's probably one of the strongest commandments that we read. Even in our current corrupt society that we live in today, we see that in our court system, we see among human nature, we see among a society, that we will forgive a man for a lot of things. Being an atheist or an idolater, a profane man, one who dishonors his parents, one who dishonors the Lord's day. Now, I didn't say that God, you know, overlooks these things, just us as society, and thankfully that all these sins that I mentioned are covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and His grace. But one thing even in our society that is not often overlooked, is when a man or a woman willfully and deliberately robs another of his or her life. The society at large considers even that a great evil. And so I asked the question at the beginning, is all killing wrong? And as I begin this commandment, and as I got further into it, and I looked into what is killing, I believe that this verse here is not talking about all killing, but that of murder. As the Bible does permit killing in certain situations, however, murder, the act of killing in cold blood, 
is never condoned. It's never approved. God has never placed any kind of permission upon murder. But we see certain kinds of killing that have taken place. And so I want to talk about them now. Four things that I've seen, and I'm sure there are more in the Word of God. First, God does not forbid the killing of animals for food or clothing or some other, other useful purpose. Start kind of simple, right? I mean, when Noah and his family came off of the ark, God knew that they would need food, and here's what he said to them in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 3. In Genesis chapter 9 and verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you, have I given you all things. So every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. So then the you know the meat and the birds and all the and, you know even the fish and all that permission was given by God to kill the animals and birds for that use. And we know that many Old Testament pictures, we see the sacrifice of rams and lambs um, to be killed uh, following the instructions of God. So certainly we see that that killing is not forbidden in the Word of God. We also know that our Lord provided fish for 5,000 plus to eat in the New Testament, right? So the killing of animals for food or protection is allowed. I live, you know, wherever we live, if, if a tiger or a bear were to come running into my home, I'm pretty sure, for the protection of my family, I'm going to shoot it to protect my family. Now, you're welcome, right? Because I know you're all worried about tigers and bears coming into your homes, right? Or uh, I think there might be provision there. Now, I don't know that I have enough biblical evidence for that one. <laughs> uh, Matt, you don't need to write that down. <laughs> Matt, all right. Um, so we see, we see that permission there. I, I got off track. All right, here we go. Right? The second one is that I, and I think that you'll see this here when I read it from God's Word, but God does not forbid then the killing of the thief who breaks in your home to cause destruction to either you or even your family. Now again, we're talking about major differences between murder and protecting your home and family from an intruder. To go out and, and, and even then, and I'm going to read you a verse here in just a second in Exodus chapter 22 and verse 2, even then, I think as children of God, we should do our very best not to resort right to that violence, not to resort right to killing, but you read in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 2, 22, 2, it says, If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. What it's saying is, if a thief is breaking in and he shall die, then that blood is not on you. I mean, that's basically what that verse is saying. So if I wake up in the middle of the night and I've already taken care of the tiger and the bear that has come and attacked my family, right, I've already gotten past that, and now i got a thief coming in and he's broken into my house to steal our property or harm my family, uh, we have the right you know, to shoot him and, and really no punishment to come from it. Even now, the laws of our land today, for now, recognizes the same principle. But as I said, while the law permits it, I don't think as, as Christians it should be our first recourse. Yes, protect your family. Absolutely, positively. The threat is among your family. And we see here, if a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. Protect your family. Absolutely. But I really think that if we have a rational opportunity to talk to somebody, don't just shoot because we're allowed. Okay? Make sense? So, again, we're talking about killing murder, and we're going to be talking about, you know, these things here. So that's, that's the second one that I see. All right? Third, and this one, you know, kind of strikes controversy 
um, among Christians and non-Christians. Um, but I'm going to give it as, as one that I see as, as not being forbidden. And uh, I have hopefully some biblical rationalization there. But um, again, not my word, but God's word. So let God's word speak to you. But I, I think from the study and what I have read and, and been through, that the third one that I want to mention, that killing in war is not forbidden uh, here as we read, Thou shalt not kill. So again, it comes down to killing or murder. And when you're fighting in a war for your country, um, I don't know that we can consider that murder, again, according to the word of God. Why? Well, we are citizens of a nation, right? I am a citizen of the United States of America. And we are to obey the rules of the land. And so if our government declares war against another nation, and I got drafted to that war, as a citizen of the United States of America, I would be required uh, to go to war. And then, and then, you know, again, I got thinking about this. There is, there's one instance in the Word of God where God did directly command war when God's people Israel were commanded to fight the nations of Canaan. And while I don't think, and you all can correct me if I'm wrong later, that we have any direct commands from God anymore to go to war, uh, we, you know, obey our, our powers to be. And so if we are in a combat situation, right? That's where I'm at with that. As I said this morning in the message, we as Christians would 100% look forward to the time when all wars were cease when our Lord comes back. So we, we look forward to that time. And then number four, the fourth, the fourth one that I see uh, as not forbidden by God is that of, of the one that... And excuse all the, 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 the unclassiness as I say this, but the one that would ultimately flip the switch in capital punishment. Okay? In Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6, Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6, let me, let me read you this verse here. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for the image of God made he man. So if you murder another man, your blood will be shed. I mean, that, that's what the verse in its simplicity is saying. So you see, again, this is where murder is going to start to come in. The man who murders is to be put to death. So then the one that is responsible, as I said, excuse me for saying it this way, for flipping the switch uh, on the man in the electric chair, again, um, I would say he's just doing his job, okay? So not all killing. But what we see clearly, and the, where we're going to spend the rest of our message today, is in cold-hearted murder. Murder, all throughout the Word of God, is forbidden. And it has a lot of different shapes and forms. We will spend the rest of our time showing from the scriptures that murder is never allowed by God. We talk about direct murder. We're going to talk about direct murder or indirect murder. Now, what do you think indirect murder is going to be? That's right. You're already ahead of me. That's when we're going to go back to Matthew, right? When we're not killing in cold blood, but God tells us if we hate our brother that we've already murdered him in our heart, right? But direct murder, first, that's what we're going to talk about, direct murder. This means deliberately going out after a man to take his life by violence. Now, we read or we hear about this kind of murder all the time. As I said this morning, uh, 2015 has shown us, and we've heard about more mass murders, mass killings, than we've had in the past probably 10 years. I didn't say that there hasn't been any in the past 10 years, but it seems that 2015 was full of direct murder. And there is direct murder all around us. And the number of such crimes rise almost every year. And I say this not as a political statement, but I just go ahead and say it to say this. Guns are not to blame in murder. Sin is to blame. Man ignoring God and God's word. Man not following after the commands of God found in the word of God. So direct murder is on the rise. 
And man uses, you know, man doesn't just use guns to kill, right? I mean, guns are a tool in which uh, men use, but not all murders are conducted. Direct murders are, are guns are used. Knives are used. Hands are used. Uh, you know, gases are used. Ropes are used. All kinds of different ways that man kills another man in direct murder. And it simply, again, shows us about the sinfulness of man. It shows us that we are not following after the things of God. It shows that man is getting further and further away from the things of God. And sin, of course, is, is on the rise. Now, we know of a murder very early on in the Word of God, don't we? We know of a murder. Cain went out and directly murdered his brother Abel and suffered the punishment from that in Genesis chapter 4. So murder is not, con it's not ever condoned. God never puts his seal of approval on murder. Now I'm going to read a lot of context here. I'm going to read in chapter 4 of the book of Genesis, verses 8 through 15. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. How'd you like that? Be walking around with your brother in the field and all of a sudden, bang! Just, no, it's not funny. Murder. That's what it was. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou, cur art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the, unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. So there was punishment for this murder. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Cain was all, all saying, you know, this punishment is too great. You know, what happens when I leave here? Everybody's going to want to try to kill me. So there was punishment for that direct murder. Another murder, another direct murder that is forbidden would be that of a mob or gang murder. You don't hear too much about the mob or the mafia anymore. I mean, I, I don't hear too much about a mob or a mafia. But you hear a lot about gang shootings, right? Being in a gang does not authorize or give the right for a gang member to kill another. Being in a mob or being in a gang does not give them the right to hold their own authority over our court justice system. So being in a mob or in a gang would be that of a direct murder. And it's forbidden by God. Okay? Again, a gang or a mob has no right to usurp the functions of a court justice. These next two are not the funnest to talk about, but I think should be talked about. When we talk about direct murder, another one that came to my mind was that <coughs> of suicide. Now I'm speaking carefully here, but suicide, though it can be forgiven by God and God alone, is never to be taken as a good thing. Suicide is a mess. It leaves a bigger mess for those that are left behind to deal with the mess. Again, child of God, as I said this morning, our bodies are not our own. We are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. And I, you know, I, I speak on this not trying to be uncaring or unkind or incompassionate. Listen, you know, as a pastor, as a man of God, as a man, as a human, I know there are tough times. I know that, you know, there are times when things feel like there is not a good answer. 
But I believe in the power of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I believe that Jesus Christ is able, able, more than able, to overcome and help you overcome any situation in your life. And I, and I don't say that arrogantly because I know that there are times that life is tough. And I know when I lost, and you all probably know exactly what I'm thinking of and why I'm saying all this and why I'm trying to be delicate, but when I lost a very good friend or preacher brethren to suicide just because he was a good friend and just because I believe he knew the Lord doesn't take away from the fact that suicide is wrong. <laughs> And it was a very hard time. It was a hard time for myself, for my wife, for many that knew him, for the church that he was involved in. It was a very difficult time. As I said, suicide is a mess, and it leaves a bigger mess for those that are left behind. So the taking of your own life, I would say, would be that of, right? Now, again, only God knows the heart, and only God is able to forgive, and, and I just leave that in the hands of God. And then the next one that I'm going to mention is that of the killing of unborn, which I would classify as murder. That of abortion. We see that again, so many things are on the rise. Murders are on the rise. You read about them, you hear about them, you know, you, you don't think that they're in your own community, but they are. Re recently, Mount Vernon, we had that uh, double homicide. A man killed his mother and his, uh, his girlfriend. We I mean, write in Mount Vernon, you know, we hear about these things all the time. Columbus, you know, Grant Hospital, lots of people come in because of attempted murders and things like that. We hear about that. We hear about suicides on the rise. We hear about gang murders on the rise. And we certainly hear about abortion on the rise, right? And now we may, I'm telling you what, let me, let me give a little encouragement because I've kind of been a negative nanny all day. So let me try to give a little bit of encouragement. You know, there are some very positive movements by children of God right now uh, for, for, you know, with the defunding of Planned Parenthood in some ways, right? Even for a temporary government defunding of Planned Parenthood. That's a good thing, right? That's a positive thing. We are making a mark. We are making a difference, but we do need to stand up. It is time for us to do something, as we've been talking about it. I'm not saying back down, but we can make a difference. But again, it just goes back to a disregard to God and His Word, right? Now, you heard me preach um, uh, Baby is a Baby uh, probably a year ago, February, because February is Abortion Awareness Month, so it was probably in February last year. Uh, that I preached a message about a baby is a baby, and I'm not going to take the time to go all the way through that again, but we can go through and we can see how a baby is a baby from conception, right? How does anything grow that's not alive? Let's just, just I mean, is that just, again, right? Two men cannot replenish the earth, two women can, cannot replenish the earth, and a dead thing can't grow. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, let's just use some common science that's out there available for us today. I don't even have to get that technical, right? So a baby is a baby at conception, and so the killing of an unborn is just it's just murder. It's it's just murder. Okay. Uh, the Bible talks about in the book of Proverbs. You know uh, these six things doth the Lord hate. Yet the yea seven are abomination of, uh, to him. And uh, of course one of them uh, says hands that shed innocent blood. We can go through the scripture even. I don't even have to go through. You know I mean the scripture gives us all the science that we need. We saw that the babe leaped in Elizabeth's womb. You remember that right? And before I knew you, I formed you, right? It says in Jeremiah, or before I formed you, I knew you, sorry. <laughs> kind of got to get that order right. Right? It says in Jeremiah. So, to murder a baby at any age, in the womb or outside of the womb, is murder. All right. <clears throat> you probably have more in your mind, direct murders. None of those, again, approved by God, right? Thou shalt not kill. The second one that I said I wanted to talk about, and bear with me, if you've been here on Wednesday nights, you get to hear it again a little bit, but it took me two and a half messages, not two and a half. I say two and a half because I know one of the messages went long, or I assume that it did because it was a three-page message when I looked at it. So to me, that means that they went long because I'm a two-page preacher. Okay, that's enough about that. So I know I preached at least two messages and a half. <laughs> about this indirect murder, if you will, as our Lord was teaching it in the book of Matthew. Go back, if you would, please, as I was reading in our text in Matthew chapter 5. And I read to you verse 17 where the Lord directly said, and I read it again, He says, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to 
fulfilled. Okay? And then we go on, and again, there's so much rich content here. As I said, we've been here at least a year. So many things that we can talk about and preach about. But we're going we're gonna to go back, and we're going to go to verse 21. You have heard that it is instead of them, or I'm sorry, by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. Sounds really familiar, doesn't it? It sure does. It sounds just like Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13. So as I said, our Lord did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. All right, murder, right? Here we go. But I say unto you, so here comes the food, right? He came to fulfill, and he came with, with grace and with love, and he says, but I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Rebecca, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thy fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Great day. We see a lot of indirect murder. Now, one of the books that I was reading when it talks about indirect murder, um, you know, took it, it did talk about these texts in Matthew, but it also talked about indirect murder in some other ways. I didn't write them down in the sermon here, uh, but it's food for thought. So I'm not going to fully endorse or unendorse, but give you some food for thought. So it talked about one of the ones that I remember in this book that I was reading as I was preparing for this was this indirect murder, right? So we know we know cold blooded murder, we know direct murder. So let's say, let's say right um, that you're a bartender and you are serving a man or a woman drink after drink after drink after drink you are selling them uh, alcohol that that person they go out and they're they're under the influence of alcohol and they do kill somebody right because they have done something the the alcohol has influenced them the cops found the mortician are found that the alcohol was to blame and that's direct murder we know that's direct murder and 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 the, the author went on to say that indirect murder could definitely be of the man that sold the alcohol to cause the one to go out that caused you know the wreck or the killing right food for thought something to think about as we think about indirect murder um, okay, so again, that's just one of the things that I read there. But this is the word of God that, you know, certainly that we read here, what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Again, what we learn in the New Testament, that the Lord Jesus Christ never did away with the law. He didn't do away with the command, thou shalt not kill, but he fulfilled it and really uh, convicted us with what this commandment means. We talked about, as I said in these messages, it took us a couple of weeks at least to get through it. We talked about the backdrop, you know, the way the Jews kept the sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill. Right? They believed, the Jews, right here, as they were teaching, that if uh, that it, it was sin uh, to be abstained from, as long as they didn't strike the final blow, they were righteous in the eyes of the law. As long as I don't kill someone in cold blood. Murder. But the Lord is now laying down that you can no longer take pride in not committing the murder. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And I spent a long time without a cause because we might try to rationalize a lot of causes. I have the right cause. I'm telling you I have all rights in essence to murder my brother or sister. Yeah. Let's be real careful there by justifying our cause to be mad at our brother or sister to the place that it would be considered thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. I don't think that any of us really can raise our hand and say that we have enough cause when what we did to our Lord was far worse. Right? So let's be real careful as we talk about that. You see, murder is deep. Murder begins with the seed and the depths of the heart. And this is really serious. Because I would say... If we were honest with ourselves, that we are all murderers by the Lord's definition at one time or another. Whoever is angry with his brother without a cause. Because I'm pretty sure a lot of the causes that I think that I had were not causes in the eyes of the Lord. We don't like to think of our anger that way, though. But let me read you a couple other verses. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 15. 1 
1 John 3.15, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 19 through 21, we love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Now we can try to water that down, and we can try to make it say something else, but the Word of God says what it says. And God means what He says, and He says what He means. Bottom line, if we hate a brother or a sister, it says that we're a murderer. Thou shalt not kill. He says that this anger needs to be stopped. This seed of anger needs to be stopped. The first sin of murder is that of silent hate. It is the idea of anger within your heart to your brother, but yet you never say anything. You just hold it in and you have this hatred toward your brother or toward your sister, and you think you're doing okay because you've never told it to your brother or sister, you've never told it to anybody else, you've kept it all in, but you, yet you still hate. Yet you still have anger. I mean, again, 1 John 3.15 is very clear. Matthew 5.22 is very clear. A next, next one that we see here gets into this murdering with the heart may be silent, but now you've expressed it in words. When your anger is permitted to express itself in utter contempt for another brother in Christ. The word reka means vain and empty. Our Lord treated this anger as a feeling within the heart. And now he goes further, proceeds the case where you're angry and your words display the feelings within Thou fool, when you say thou fool, when you basically you're saying you're good for nothing, you're empty headed. This is that indirect murder that our Lord is talking about here. We could go further. But I think I've given you enough to chew on for at least the rest of this afternoon. So all murder is wrong. In any context, no murder is justified. So I pray that God will use his word and add the blessing to it for us. I thank you for your attention to the word of God, and shall we stand together to be dismissed in a word of prayer.